After the U.S. government acknowledged reports of UFOs may be real, it turns out the truth may not be out there after all. Several U.S. news outlets are reporting U.S. intelligence officials have found no evidence that unidentified flying objects seen by Navy aviators are alien spacecraft. But the vast majority of incidents also did not originate from any American military technology. The findings are expected to be released in a report to Congress later this month. For more, let's go to Victor Vigianani. He is a UFO disclosure expert joining me from Toronto. Hi, Victor. Good morning, Jennifer, and how are you doing? I'm well, but I want to know if the truth is out there. This report says <laughs> no evidence these objects are quote-unquote alien spacecraft, but they didn't originate from U.S. military, so where'd they come from? Well, it's it's a clear case of the United States government speaking out of both sides of their mouth. They're trying to they're trying to cover all contingencies here. Uh, they do add that in fact they really don't know where these things are from. Now they they're afraid to use the E word, the extraterrestrial word, which I don't blame them for really, because as far as they're concerned, they don't want to release any kind of evidence that would indicate that all civilizations are in fact visiting the planet. But all indications are that the technologies that the pilots are seeing are a clear indication that none of this stuff has ever been part of any arsenal in China and Russia or the United States. This stuff is so bizarre and it is a real stretch to admit that this kind of technology actually exists on the planet. They're investigating it, they may be experimenting with it, but they're nowhere close to having craft move underwater and in uh, in their Canadian and their Canadian and American airspace at speeds in excess of 12,000 miles an hour and even faster without creating a sonic boom. So mm. clearly, uh, there's more to the story than what the New York Times is actually reporting. And so that begs the question: um, Why would we believe what U.S. intelligence is releasing? I mean, would they even tell us? Because they don't want to give up secrets if it is from U.S. military. Um, but perhaps it's from China or Russia, to your point. Mm. How are we to trust what they say? Well, that's a very good point. Uh, it's, it's a matter of, of trusting the people that are inside, especially the Pentagon. And all the sources that I have been in contact with over the past 20 years, and I use that number advisedly, indicates that there are, in fact, factions within the Pentagon of people who want to keep this stuff secret, and there are people who want to let it out. So there are competing forces within the Pentagon that are, in one way or another, attempting to hide the information or delay it or get it out somehow so that it's not going to be uh, creating confusion and chaos in, in society. Now, the question of what to believe about the U.S. intelligence, that's a very good question, because for 70 years, these factions within the Pentagon have kept this thing secret. And, and what, they, what they're going to release is very uh, important in terms of what the technological implications are. And that's why they're really playing this so close to the vest and not really saying anything specific yet. But eventually, Jennifer, they're going to have to admit mm. that these things are not of extra that are of extraterrestrial uh, um, uh, origins. They're just going to have to say it eventually. It's going to happen sooner or later. It's why do you think this is coming out now, then, Victor? Well, the pressure is on. The pressure's been on since, uh, I would think, um, back to 2001, when Stephen Greer did a press conference at the National Press Club in, in Washington, D.C. That started the floodgates of disclosure uh, in terms of what the government actually knew, with uh, well over 30 witnesses giving testimony, pilots and air traffic controllers and so on. So that started. And then a fellow named Stephen Bassett had a mock hearing in Washington, D.C. in 2013. Lots of pressure is evolving about this. Lots of pressure. Well, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see, even with a healthy dose of skepticism, uh, these are uncharted waters. It, they really are. And I think the Canadian media and, and CTV has to be congratulated for taking this seriously because uh, this is, in fact, the biggest story in human history. And once the United States government uh, realizes that that is, in fact, the case, the rest of the world will wake up, too, and the media will jump on this and everyone will know about it. Okay, the biggest story in human history. That's a... That's it is. A, <laughs> that's well, a big flag. We're not alone, You're, Jennifer. <laughs> we're we not are alone, not so alone. We're... Victor Vigiani, good yeah. to have you on the program today. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Talk to you soon.